Thank you so much for joining us for the Stages of the Cross. Each day we're looking at a little devotional about what happened on that particular day before Jesus dies on the cross and then later rises again from the dead. Let me recap where we've been. On Sunday was Palm Sunday. The people were waving the palm branches saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were looking for a Messiah that would overthrow the Roman government. Jesus did not come to take on the Roman authorities. Jesus came to take on sin, death, and the grave. Jesus came so that we might be forgiven of our sins. On Monday, Jesus enters the temple. He sees that there are money changers that are extorting money from people. He gets very upset. He makes a whip. He overturns the tables. The money changers go run after the money. Jesus said, how dare you make my father's house a house of thieves? It shall be a house of prayer. And then on Tuesday, we looked at all day long, Jesus taught about his return. Jesus knew that he was gonna die for our sins. He knew that there was gonna be a many years that would go by before his return. And so he was warning us to be prepared and that he was going to entrust to us gifts and talents and abilities and resources, things that we were supposed to leverage for the kingdom of God. And so we asked ourselves the question, how are we leveraging our life for something that's going to long outlast us? We don't wanna get in this point where we're just living our life for the temporary, but we must live our lives for the eternal because we want to get to the end of our life with no regrets. We want to get to the end of our life knowing that we left our world in a little bit better shape than the way that we found it. So what does Jesus do on Wednesday? Because that's what we're up to today. Are you ready for this one? We don't know. We don't know where he did. We don't know where he went. We, we, we don't know. Most Bible scholars and historians believe that Jesus probably got alone to be with his heavenly father. That makes sense, doesn't it? The task ahead of him is going to be overwhelming. We know it's gonna be so overwhelming on, on Thursday night, Friday early morning, that he's gonna be in the Garden of Gethsemane praying so intensely that sweat drops of blood are pouring down from his brow. He knows that all the sin of mankind is gonna be placed upon him. He knows the weight and the desperation of what lies ahead. He knows his time is short. So it just makes sense that he would get alone with his heavenly father. If you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see this is a habit of Jesus day after day after day. He just wants to be in the center of God's will. Mark 1.35 says, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left his house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Wouldn't you have loved to have heard Jesus pray and talk to his dad? Friends, this relationship that Jesus has with the Heavenly Father is the same relationship that's available to us today. If you wanna grow in your relationship with Jesus, if you wanna grow closer to Him, you have to spend time with Him on a daily basis. And you've gotta do more than just a daily devotional. You gotta have a time where you sit alone with, with the Word of God and you open it up and you begin to read a chapter of Scripture and you allow God to speak to you. And then you need to have a time when you pray. Now listen, I'm always telling you shoot up short little sentence prayers all the time, all day long, just shoot up short. But you need a time where you just spend about five minutes just talking to God. There needs to be where you're surrendering yourself over to Him, where you're praying, oh God, less of me and more of you. What I want is what you want for my life. <laughs> Take my plans and I want your plans. Take my dreams, I want your dreams. I want what you want for my life. So there needs to be a time of surrender and there needs to be a time of repentance. When you pray prayers like, oh, by the way, God, forgive me for all my sins, I, I don't, I'm not sure that's repentance. I think you should name your sins one by one and ask God to forgive you for each sin. You committed those sins one by one. Let's repent of those sins. Repentance means to turn away. It means to do a 180. Say, God, I'm in need. God, I messed up here. I said something I shouldn't have said. I did something I shouldn't have done. Now, friends, you got to make this a daily habit because that's what Jesus did. He spent time with his dad every single day. Listen, you're as close to God as you've chosen to be. Jesus chose to spend time with God and it's in the amount of time that you spend with someone, it, it, it helps you get closer and closer to that person. So my hope is that this has inspired you to open up your Bible, to spend a few minutes in prayer and that you wouldn't just do it today, but you would make this a habit for the rest of your life. I'll see you tomorrow to tell you what Jesus did on Thursday.